uh, when we are talking about synergies, then uh, I just not not just mean that two projects will just uh, vet each other uh, and create new projects, but also to find synergies uh, between the subjects of the different projects that uh, just indicates that the subject was contemporary and uh, important uh, for this period uh, in the European education, uh, uh, distance education scheme. scheme. Uh, I do not know whether you searched the synergy papers of the other uh, presenters, uh, but I might say that there are certain synergies. If you just check the uh, proposed papers, uh, there are at least two of them which refer to the school modernization of the K-12 sector, including digital readiness and inclusivity. There are three others that refer to high, high, higher education curricula and intra, try to introduce more digital tools and competencies in higher, higher education, uh, not just in the customary way, uh, so as to create, uh, let's say, webinars and the dig digitally uh, recorded uh, lectures, but also uh, try to introduce uh, MOOC style curricula just to get uh, both students and teachers used to use this tool, which is very important. And uh, also there are others that just try to fill the gap of the, the digital competencies, which is still there uh, in case of uh, adults uh, called uh, uh, digital immigrants and uh, to do the same uh, in the creative industries by uh, also a very successful project. So I am happy that uh, there are certain areas uh, that uh, somehow complement each other. So to begin with, uh, I, I will uh, try to call uh, you to present uh, your slides uh, in the presentation, in the, in the sequence of the number of uh, uh, contributions. First, I would like to ask uh, the representative of the Pleiade project. I think Marina Domingo will be there to present uh, her uh, lecture. Um, I may ask you to make it short because the total uh, time allocated for this uh, session is one and a half hours. That means we have to do through, go through uh, nine different uh, projects. And uh, I would like to have a small discussion after each project uh, presentation to put it into context. So please, Marina, share your screen and start your presentation. Now, if uh, no one else from the play other project is here, then I will start uh, with Sophocles about the Reflection for Change project, the R4C aspect. Please, Sophocles, the, the floor is yours. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you very, very much, uh, Ferenc. Um, I'm going to, to present an initiative that uh, we are implementing the last uh, uh, two years with, uh, of course, with the cooperation of, uh, of Eden. Uh, it is uh, focusing on uh, reflecting uh, mechanisms uh, uh, for, uh, for schools on how, uh, let's say, we can reflect on the um, innovative approaches and the integration of uh, uh, innovative projects uh, towards the school's development and the uh, outcomes and the learning outcomes for the, for the students. So uh, this is a policy experimentation action uh, aiming to demonstrate the use of uh, self-reflecting tools uh, for schools. And um, in the framework, let's say, of the specific call of the European uh, Union, the, the idea was how uh, the different reflecting, uh, self-reflecting tools can support the implementation of selfie that is focusing on uh, the uh, immaturity of, uh, of, uh, of schools. So uh, in our, our uh, experiment, le let me say, is um, um, 
relating uh, the openness of the school environment with the digital immaturity. immaturity. We believe that uh, openness and uh, immaturity have to uh, work in parallel uh, in the in the school in order to promote um, the overall framework of uh, its uh, of its development. So, uh, in the framework of the project, we are developing a strategy and uh, towards this direction, and we are offering to schools a series of services uh, as a follow-up uh, mechanism after the um, initial uh, initial uh, re- self-reflection uh, measurements. So we are developing a profiling mechanism and that is populated with uh, data from uh, uh, the school, from the teacher's competencies, the, uh, the students' achievements, but also from additional uh, data like the number of communities the school is creating, the number of teachers involved, the number of uh, school-generated projects and so on. Uh, along with the recommendation mechanism um, to, towards, let's say, the transformation journey and uh, uh, through the offering of uh, numerous strategies uh, for uh, different uh, school, uh, school settings. Um, a, number, a big number of projects is uh, being implemented in about 300 schools uh, in, different, uh, in three different European countries, in Greece, in uh, Portugal and in uh, in Italy, they are focusing on activities that uh, are, uh, let's say, uh, highlighted from the students as uh, crucial and very important for uh, their uh, for their local communities. So uh, climate change is a, a, a key uh, theme. Uh, we are trying to enrich that, especially during the time of the pandemic, with um, uh, virtual uh, tools so students can set up wind farms and uh, operate them in order to deliver the necessary power to, to the local community. They can simulate uh, this kind of uh, projects that uh, uh, could uh, maybe implement it in the future in their local, uh, in their local uh, settings. Uh, We are organizing virtual uh, visits uh, to research infrastructures, uh, to different um, uh, settings, uh, science centers, uh, museums, and so on. And we are organizing also uh, uh, virtual events for uh, teachers to enhance their uh, cooperation. Uh, We have also taken advantage of uh, a number of... um, uh, global initiatives uh, like the IDC conference. The, we, this year it has the subject of uh, global meets uh, local. And um, uh, the, there we have designed challenges to, for students to reimagine a world after uh, COVID-19. So in, uh, 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 tomorrow we have also the, um, the presentation of the students, uh, of, of the outcome of the students' uh, contest in this one. Um, I would like, let's say, to to highlight uh, here, uh, taking also the opportunity from the key message of this uh, conference, that in the framework of our project, we had really the opportunity to uh, rethink uh, how uh, schools uh, can work when they are more open and um, more digitally competent and uh, the pandemic offered this uh, opportunity. Uh, the schools, um, let's say, had the chance to work out of the box and uh, rethink how digital technologies can uh, enhance uh, students' learning, even in this uh, problematic uh, situation. And uh, uh, we believe that it is really the time to cut uh, the red tape and, and uh, demonstrate how personalized learning and uh, other digital formats can uh, support um, uh, students to take individual ownership of their uh, learning. Uh, This was also the message from uh, OECD, who sees all this effort uh, that has been done the last one and a half year as a a big experiment that demonstrated that uh, even the traditional school settings are ready to cope uh, with uh, such a deep uh, crisis. 
And uh, in the framework of our project, we believe that uh, the teachers are a key component for this uh, success. So we have to support them by all means uh, to act as uh, facilitators of uh, students' learning by demonstrating the use of uh, innovative technologies in their, uh, in their practices. Uh, the key message from our project and uh, in the framework for also of such a synergy um, uh, activity here we are developing is uh, that uh, we, we would like to take forward the practitioner led change at European level because uh, we believe that this holds a great potential for the development of schools. Uh, we see four uh, key steps in uh, this process to help teachers to become aware of the weaknesses in their practice and try to improve. Uh, to motivate them uh, for uh, the necessary improvements uh, through different uh, challenges, uh, through cooperation, through exchange of best practices, uh, to support them to understand the way that these best practices have to be implemented, the uh, barriers, but also the enablers in the, in the process, and uh, finally to support them to become change agents in their, uh, in their uh, settings. Um, by closing and offering, let's say, an opportunity for further discussions and cooperations, we are organizing an open schooling summer school from the uh, 5th uh, till the 9th of uh, July. Uh, you can see the program. Uh, here we see and we are introducing a new role uh, for uh, the schools in the framework of the new European Bauhaus. Uh, we see the schools as uh, a role model for the innovation way and the new European Bauhaus, how schools uh, and educational buildings in general can act as incubators for innovation and creativity and turn really the school, uh, uh, the school buildings to living labs, not only for the students and the teachers, but also for the local, uh, local communities. Thank you. Um, and uh, I would be happy to discuss these ideas further. I hope I was uh, okay in time, parents. Uh, I, I especially thank for you for keeping the time, Sophocles. It's very important. And it was a very, very good uh, lecture, uh, putting the uh, R4C project into context. Since it is in the K-12 context, uh, first I would like to ask the uh, representative of the Paya, the project, to uh, have her lecture and then treat the two uh, school projects together uh, with respect to questions and answers. So please, uh, Marlina, could you present your part about the project? Uh, yes. Um, will you share the screen or uh, should I do that? You can, can you, could you share the screen? Yeah, I, I think so. Yes. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Thanks. Yes, it's okay. Uh, it is there. Yeah, okay. Can you see it? You can see it. Uh, I just wanted to make it like a presentation. Okay. Uh, so uh, mm -hmm. I should go in the beginning. Okay. I'm talking on behalf of the Pleiade project. Uh, this is, um, well, PLAYD is uh, actually an acronym and stands for Playful Environment for Inclusive Learning Design in Europe. Uh, what is this? Uh, this is an Erasmus Plus funded project. It is funded under the Action for Strategic Partnership for Schools, uh, for School Innovation. And uh, it uh, aimed at addressing exactly uh, these priorities, the priority of social inclusion, uh, strengthening the profile of teachers, a te a teaching profession, and tackling uh, early school leaving and disadvantage. Uh, these are priorities set by the Erasmus program, uh, which our project wanted to uh, uh, address. And uh, we did it. Uh, 
setting up a partnership. Uh, as you can see, it is very varied partnership. We have uh, uh, research institutions. Uh, so uh, the, the coordinator is indeed the uh, Italian National Research Council, the Institute for Technological, uh, for Educational Te uh, Technology. Then we have a university, the Sofia University, uh, we have also a um, small software company based in Florence, and they are specialized in uh, um, uh, educational video games. And, uh, and we'll tell you why they have been involved. You will understand soon why they have been involved in the project. And, oh, and then finally, we also have the European Distance and E-Learning Network. Uh, and, uh, but... Um, as I said, this is a project aimed to teachers. So uh, in the partnership, we also have four schools. We have a school in Bulgaria, in Sofia. We have a school in uh, southern Italy, in Trani, and uh, another school in Greece, Athens, and then a school in Cyprus. Uh, we also have an associate partner uh, who is... Um, who, who, will turn out to be very helpful, particularly in the dissemination steps of the project, because it is the associations for teachers, uh, for teacher education in Europe, based in Brussels. Uh, you can learn more about the partners if you go to the project website that you can find here. So what are the aims of our project? The aims of our project is to improve teachers' capacity uh, in particular, the capacity to design and implement learning activities which are inclusive and are based on collaborative approach, uh, approaches. Um, and also another important aim is to create a community of practice between these uh, teachers so that they can share their practice and experiences and uh, so uh, build up on their competencies. Um, these are the main aims of the project and how are we going to um, accomplish them? Okay, uh, the first thing that we want to do is to create a blended um, training uh, environment and tools for the teachers so that they can learn more about designing uh, learning design and about collaborative learning um, tools. And then uh, we, uh, the novelty of this uh, whole project is in fact uh, its gamification aspect because we, uh, the, uh, this professional development uh, takes place in a gamified and participatory um, platform. And uh, this platform will be also used uh, in the final steps of our project, which is the enactment phase, where uh, the uh, teachers will actually uh, test their activities in the classrooms. And they will talk about best practices and finally uh, create a, a guide for other teachers. But we're going to see uh, this later. Um, this is uh, the uh, timing um, the, of our uh, project. As you can see, the red line shows that we have already, um, well, we are about, uh, uh, the project started about uh, maybe uh, 10, 11 months ago. And in the first eight months, we have managed to um, uh, already uh, um, complete uh, three of the six uh, intellectual outputs uh, of the project, uh, which are uh, the um, blended uh, platform uh, for the training of teachers. We, they have, well, we have produced uh, the materials uh, and also uh, set up the platform and the gamified platform. Uh, we have also uh, yeah, uh, created the, the gamified platform the gamified platform. And finally, uh, we have also created the hybrid game. Uh, this hybrid game is based on a previous game that, uh, that uh, uh, the National Research Council of Italy had uh, created, and it was just a board game. And in, uh, and, uh, in this project, we uh, uh, made this board game. Uh, we left the board game, but we added also uh, 
some computerized uh, um, feedback for the teachers so that they can improve their uh, activities and the way they have designed their activities. We have already uh, created this and we are now starting with the blended uh, activities. The blended activities, they are blended because they include, uh, you can see the uh, orange uh, squares here. They, they include a part that is um, uh, done asynchronously uh, between the teachers and is uh, based a lot on uh, collaboration, on collaboration. And then we have uh, um, uh, another part that is uh, more uh, intensive and uh, was meant to be done um, in presence, unfortunately, because of the pandemic situation, it has been moved uh, um, um, uh, online for the time being. We hope that the next ones, and these are the uh, darker yellow, uh, darker orange squares that you can see here. And after this, as you can see, there is still another uh, orange phase. And this is the enactment phase I was talking about. And during this enactment phase, uh, we shall produce uh, uh, these uh, other intellectual output, which is an evaluation kit uh, for uh, inclusion aware collaborative activities. And uh, this is uh, a kit that will be made available also to other teachers. And uh, we will collect uh, good practices and we will also create an amplification kit that can uh, um, be used to amplify the results of the project. Just to give you uh, some numbers of these projects, these are the expected uh, impact of the project. We uh, expect about seven, uh, 75 teachers from the four schools to take part in the training. And the enactment phase, we expect 50 teachers to try their activities uh, for a total of uh, 600 students and uh, to collect about 20 uh, selected good practices. And uh, to, uh, we will have also dissemination. Uh, uh, 12,000 people will be involved in the dissemination. And uh, we will also have uh, some multiplier events uh, in which we will uh, try to um, involve uh, other teachers and other schools, as well as other um, research uh, organizations. Um, this is all. Thank you for uh, listening to me. And I will uh, stop sharing. And of course, if you have questions, I'll answer them. Thank you, Marlina. Uh, uh, it was very, very interesting. And I think there are some synergies with the previous project with respect to school improvement, with respect to uh, teachers uh, training in the digital competencies and with respect to how to uh, design activities for enhance the learning experience of uh, teachers in the K-12 sectors. So, at this point, I might ask the audience that they would like to pose any questions concerning the two, two projects. You might indicate your willingness uh, in the chat box or dialect. Terence, I think there is already a question for Liades. Barilla, is the uh -huh. policy framework in uh, the three countries support yes, inclusive uh -huh. teaching? Yeah. Uh, okay, um, uh, yes, um, the policy frameworks, uh, uh, well, uh, I don't know, really, uh, I cannot talk about other countries, uh, really, but I can tell you that in Italy, we do have a policy for disadvantaged uh, um, um, students, uh, and uh, we have a, pro uh, a policy for inclusion. Uh, it is uh, uh, well uh, a policy that uh, allows uh, these uh, students uh, with uh, spatial needs or cultural disadvantage to uh, 
uh, have to receive a personalized uh, uh, training and uh, personalized curricula compared to the rest of the other students. But also they are, um, in Italy in particular, uh, our students, uh, also special needs students, they are in the same uh, classrooms as uh, regular students, uh, as normal students. And uh, they uh, have the same, uh, um, the same opportunities, but they uh, can uh, use, for instance, don't know if they have problems like uh, uh, this lecture, they, uh, the teachers can agree on them using, for instance, a computer to, for writing or uh, text to speech if they have problems reading. And uh, this is perfectly allowed for inclusion. So don't know if I answered the question. Yes. I, I know about Italy. I don't Thank know you. about Italy. Thank, Thank you, Marilyn. I think we have to proceed just to keep the time. Uh, well, I think that uh, we can turn our attention to the virtual teach uh, solution for comprehensive and coordinated training for foreign language teachers in Europe. Uh, it belongs to the group of the projects that deals uh, with teacher training. So please, uh, Neela, uh, have your lecture now. Yes, hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you uh, very much for uh, the opportunity to present. Uh, my name is Neela. I am from Belgium and um, I represent UCLL, a higher education institution here in, in Belgium. I am looking to share my presentation, um, but I'm not seeing it at the moment. Ah, there it is, I think. So I will uh, be presenting the DivTeach project, which is uh, an Erasmus Plus project, uh, and it is aimed uh, at creating a virtual solution for a comprehensive and coordinated training in the field of foreign language teacher education. Um, there are several project partners, uh, among which uh, Portugal, uh, Romania, uh, um, Poland, uh, and then Spain, and then I am from, uh, as I said, UC Leuven Limburg in Belgium. Um, and the project actually started three years ago, uh, so we are now in the end phase. Um, and the project was written starting from a few gaps and needs um, in the field of foreign language teacher training in Europe. Um, one of the first gaps uh, that we noticed was that there is an increasing uh, mobility within Europe uh, for teachers and students. But um, there is no unified curriculum, so it, was, it, it still is very difficult for students to um, take their experience from um, um, an international uh, program or experience to their home country and to have it uh, recognized in the, at the same level. So there is this increased mobility, but there is no unified curriculum. At the same time, uh, there is no clear platform, there is no digital tool to share these experiences, neither for students nor for uh, professors or for lecturers. Um, and uh, to end with, there is no common European policy uh, for this kind of internationalization or uh, exchange. So this is kind of the situation where uh, the VIF Teach project um, originated from or was started in. Starting from these needs and gaps, we uh, tried to work or we created some activities to work toward a more um, curriculum convergence as well as a policy uh, convergence. In the first place, uh, this led to an online interactive toolkit for best practices. So um, the goal here was to have a, a more unified format of uh, teacher education in foreign language uh, teaching. So um, to have a more of an international and European approach to uh, the methodologies and to the contents uh, that are being taught at um, European universities. Um, to have a solution to the lack of an online platform, we also created a virtual learning environment to offer students, trainee teachers, lecturers, the possibility to go online, um, to offer them the possibility for lifelong learning 
uh, in this field of, of uh, language learning and also to have the possibility to create this kind of European network between higher education institutions in Europe. Uh, a third uh, output that we created is a digital internship notepad um, because now, up until now, the internship is something that is organized very locally, also by the university themselves. And this uh, internship notepad is a way to create a more standardized format, an international format. And uh, because it is digital, because it is online, it also offers the possibility for exchange between several institutions. So it has several benefits, but I will go into this in more detail. And then the last activity that we just uh, finalized is a white paper with policy recommendations for European policymakers. Um, the target group or audience of the projects is very broad. Um, professors and lecturers, trainee teachers, researchers and experts, policymakers, all in the field of language education. And uh, the main goal is to work towards a European network, uh, international exchange, and uh, one of the main um, tools to reach this is our digital platform um, as a way to standardize and to exchange international experience. So as I told you, the first uh, output is the interactive toolkit. So this one is uh, freely available online. I will show you the um, project website later on. Um, so it has open education resources, methodolog methodolo methodological guidelines, examples of best practices, etc. So these are mostly targeted at um, lecturers and um, teachers of trainee teachers in language education. And there is our virtual learning environment. Um, it is a MOOC or a massive online open course uh, in, um, on the platform of edX. It is designed to be a lifelong learning platform with a sp special focus on uh, communicative approach, but also a digital approach as a way to um, implement IT or the digital tools more in teacher education, which most in most programs is not um, present. So in this way, uh, the, the virtual learning environment offers a way to also implement ICT competences in the program. And uh, there is also a specific attention for the intercultural approach. Um, going through the whole course would take 14 weeks approximately with an average investment of 10 hours per week. Um, embedded in the virtual learning environment is um, the interactive internship notepad. It is um, based on the Kanban um, method, more specifically through the Trello um, uh, platform um, and it, it, it offers a way to, to really unify and standardize uh, the management process of the internship because there are often multiple agents involved in such a process. You have the student, you have the mentor and you have the university tutor and uh, very often there is a lack of communication between these three or everything needs to happen face to face or in person. And then even if the process goes well, if there would be a student who, who wants to go abroad, often there's, it's very difficult to communicate about the internship experience between different institutions. Having a, a digital notepad would definitely be a way to, um, to improve the communication between all agents involved. And it would also uh, definitely um, foster uh, international exchange in the internship as well. And uh, lastly, there is a white paper, which is more of a policy document. Um, it will also be available online and it will discuss uh, several critical aspects uh, in the current situation of foreign language teacher education. Uh, it will also have a focus on uh, more gender balance or recommendations for more gender balance in um, the education program, but also on how to implement ICT better in uh, language education. So uh, after three years, we hope to have received these results. Um, we have created an international and virtual learning environment, which can foster lifelong learning. 
Um, and it also offers a standardized and digital format for the internship for, for trainee students. Um, and all of this can also form a basis for a European network between students, teachers, professors, and various higher education institutions. Um, as I already said, uh, it also um, supports the implementation of ICT as well as intercultural communication in teacher education. And we really hope to work with this towards a unified format and a unified European policy. So all of these outputs that I present to you are freely accessible at uh, the project website, uh, the vigteachproject.eu. Uh, you can all find uh, all resources, resources uh, there. So I kept it short. Uh, I don't know yes. if it was seven minutes or, uh, but I, I'm... I'm uh, thank, thank, thank you, Nila. It was very nice. And yeah. uh, you, you just kept the time. We are five minutes uh, behind schedule, but it's not because of your, your lecture. It is because of the whole process, which last, okay. lasted a bit uh, longer. Uh, to my mind, uh, it was about a um, holistic approach to yeah. language learning, not just the digital tools, but also a system, a standardization, a full environment of uh, mm -hmm. language teaching in Europe. So it is a uh, uh, right, uh, how do you say, uh, right approach uh, to modernize and to unify the, the approaches all around Europe. Uh, the next uh, presentation will also be connected to uh, teacher training. Uh, it will, will be the promoting digitalization among teacher educators in, in Europe, the uh, digital project. So mm -hmm. I yeah. would like to ask uh, Marijke to mm -hmm. have the lecture. Please, yes. Marika, it's your floor. Please keep it in seven minutes. Yes, yes, I would love to. Yeah. Thank you. Well, okay. Um, thank you. So my name is Marika Oesteler. I'm from the University of Education in Ludwigsburg, which is in the south of Germany, and I'm rather new to Eden, so I'm very happy to be here today and to, to introduce to you our project. Based on my involvement in various national and European projects before, during the last six years in teacher education, the professor I work with, Götz Schwab, and I, we developed together with six other European universities a new project idea, which I would like to introduce to you today, and which has already been handed in two months ago. So we haven't started the project yet, but we handed in the proposal. The project is, um, as, as it was introduced, promoting digitalization among teacher educators in Europe, short digital at you, and was submitted as an Erasmus Plus project under the key action line cooperation partnerships. So quite similar to the two previous projects. The budget we proposed for is approximately 400,000 euros for a duration of three years, and we hopefully will start in January 2022. In this presentation, I would like to present to you our main idea, our, our objectives, and also the proposed project results. Most importantly, and as also um, Ulf Elas emphasized this morning in the plenary session when he spoke of opportunities, um, I would like to use this great opportunity here at the Eden Conference to share this idea and also to hopefully broaden our network for future initiatives or also connections to our project. Just very briefly to show you the partners involved in this project, there are six higher education institutions in total project partners from Germany, Sweden, Spain, Estonia and Ireland. And we also included two associated partners from the UK and from Croatia. With this project, we want to, or we directly aim at the Digital Education Action Plan 2021 to 2027, set by the European Commission in 2021. Thus, it was one of our major priorities to make teacher education fit for the digital age by promoting the digital capabilities among, we believe, its most crucial players, the teacher educators, also, of course, together with the teachers um, in schools. With teacher educators, we mean lecturers, teachers who teach future teachers at higher education institutions from various disciplines. So we do not focus on only one subject or discipline, but, um, but invite a broad number of participants to, um, to our project. Accordingly, we seek to respond to the vast digitalization taking place, as well as the aftermath of the COVID-19 crisis, which uh, we think and is also by many seen as a catalyst in this digital development. The objectives of our project are thus the following. So first, we will develop a hybrid program for the professional development of teacher educators 
the hybrid format or exploring the hybrid format is very central for us um, to develop and to explore various formats for collaborating and learning in a hybrid um, in a hybrid version in a hybrid program. This program will um, then hopefully enhance the teacher educators' digital skills, competencies, creativity, promote their readiness to teach online and also to design and organize digital courses and provide resources for them uh, for tech-based assessment and feedback. Second, and we aim at empowering teacher educators to become more involved and creative and active in their own learning and development processes. And third, we will stimulate transnational interdisciplinary collaboration and so also promote uh, interdisciplinary and transnational communities of practice on different levels in regard to digital teaching practices among teacher educators. Fourth, we will then promote the creation of a European Digital Education Hub. Then we will provide concrete recommendations for policymakers to generate practice-oriented digitalization strategies for teacher educators, which do not exist yet, uh, especially in the countries um, or in the countries we work with. And six, we aim at helping teacher education become more professional and rep reputable. Based on these objectives, the project results um, will be um, hopefully very hands-on. So um, we will develop a hybrid program for the digital professional development of teacher educators, the outline of which I would like to show you in a minute. There will be a virtual teacher educator makerspace in form probably of a website containing multimodal and interactive content, something we imagine like, um, like a wiki, for example, something like that, as well as a toolkit on and for the digitalization among teacher educators. There will be an online catalog of hands-on criteria to evaluate digital teaching practices of teacher educators for them also to use for their own practices, possibly in the form of a digital interactive flowchart. There will be a number of multimodal transnational case studies. So this is the research side of the project uh, in which the data will feed into. And most crucial, we believe, about this project is really the development of a European digitalization strategy. So also what Nele said before, to unify what is already out there and to develop something common together. This output will comprise institutional, national, European action plans and recommendations, as well as concrete actions for, for the accreditation of qualifications for teacher educators. Last but not least, there will be a post-COVID-19 vlog for ideas and solutions to innovate teacher education. This output was especially developed to, to, make, to make the whole project more sustainable and also might lead into preparing to launch a teacher academy under the key action two of Erasmus Plus projects in the future. So very briefly, I would like to show you what, um, what this hybrid program will, be look, uh, will look like. So the pro program will be tested three times and include about 30 teacher educators per cohort. So in total, there will be 90 teacher educators from various disciplines from the partner institutions in total. The participants can choose whether they participate virtually or physically. They will start by attending a kickoff meeting at the beginning, work on a number of different tasks, but most importantly, take part in the so-called Digitet EU Innovation Week. So this is the very heart of the project. This week will be hosted at three different partner universities in Ireland, Sweden and Spain, three times in the duration of the project and will be a five-day stay abroad, either virtually or physically. It will be similar to an educational hackathon, which means that the participants will work transnationally on innovative solutions to common problems in teacher education. So, for example, they will get the question, OK, how can I integrate blended or hybrid formats in my teaching? So this is a common problem or a common issue. And these solutions they develop must then fulfill, of course, a number of criteria. For example, they must have a digital component, an inclusive character, be student oriented and so on. At the end of the week, they will present their solutions and the best solution will then be awarded with a prize. And at the end, there will be, of course, some kind of multiplier events and conferences these solutions will be um, presented at. Now, why do we believe that our project is, um, is relevant? The teacher educator's impact on the digitalization of teacher education is indisputable. And likewise, the need to support and train them in using digital tools creatively is widely acknowledged. And yet systematic learning opportunities, we think, 
And over-digitalization strategies are very rare or non-existent. And by implementing our project, we do not intend to reinvent the wheel. So it's not something that we would like to develop from nothing, but we would like to follow up and innovatively gather, connect and rethink what has been developed so far in the different countries and contexts in regard to promoting digitalization among teacher educators on different levels. So we believe that especially after the COVID or especially the COVID-19 pandemic has provided new opportunities and can also be seen as a chance for teacher educators with new opportunities to teach, learn and research. And we would like to yeah, gather, use and exploit them in this project. So, um, yeah, so we hope that from January 2022 onwards, you can watch out for our social media accounts and our website. We have already set up a Twitter account, but no website yet. And there will also be a number of multiply events, um, also connecting the project to, um, uh, to the public. So we have a pub talk and borrowers, a hackathon and a final conference, which uh, you are invited to also take part in, of course. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope I was in time. And um, yes, please feel free to ask any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Marike. It was really nice, interesting, and uh, gap-filling approach to teacher training in that sense of uh, making the unified approach to give digital education of teachers. Uh, you certainly know that the tech TED Talks are a kind of a American invention and teacher education in general. Do you know that? No, I don't know that. Yeah, so just uh, go to the sites uh, and uh, look for TED Talks. Mm -hmm. uh, ah, TED Talks, this, of course. Yeah. Yes, yeah. of course yes, I know yes, TED yeah. Talks. Yeah, 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 yeah. sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course okay. I do. Yeah, 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 I do. Okay, okay, nice. So uh, um, we are just running after the time. Uh, may I ask Alfredo to have his lecture on complex trajectories, uh, which is, uh, for me, uh, at least uh, a gap-filling uh, approach, how to uh, track the students' uh, uh, track through the educational system, because uh, this is changing all the time because of the uh, ever lo uh, lower interest in academic subjects. And because of frequent changes uh, of uh, students in the different uh, parts of the higher education, uh, changing subjects, uh, uh, jumping from one university course to another quite freely. So the retention is a very uh, important thing. So please, thank Alfredo. Thank you, Ferenc, for the your... uh, words and the presentation. Um, the project uh, is coordinated by Joseph and he's present and uh, he will present the, uh, this project because he's the coordinator and uh, he knows better the project than I do. Joseph, please, go ahead. Thank you, Alfredo. Uh, thank you, Ferenc, and all of you, uh, and in particular, Ferenc, for your uh, starting uh, presenting this project. As you mentioned, um, this is a Erasmus Plus project. Um, you can see here the title of the project is promoting students' successful uh, trajectories in higher education institutions. But with this idea that uh, we work together with institutions, face-to-face uh, -face institutions, means uh, traditional institutions and online institutions. Uh, <clears throat> um, we have also a, a web page that you can, can see here on the, on the website. And let me just to remark here the, which are the institutions that are members of our consortium, uh, the consortium of this Erasmus Plus project. As you can see here, it's, uh, it's the different universities in Spain, but most of them are in, in Catalonia. In particular, it's uh, my university, Open University of Catalonia, but also with uh, Autonomous University in Barcelona, which is a face-to-face -face university, and also University of Valencia which is also a face-to-face -face university too. But it's also participating uh, the Secretariat of uh, Universities. It, that means it's like uh, Catalan Ministers of Higher Education uh, here, uh, who is uh, offering to us uh, all of the data uh, about uh, students and their trajectories, academic trajectories, in, in particular in, in, higher, in Catalan higher education system. 
In Portugal, uh, we have the participation of the University of Porto, uh, which is a face-to-face -face university, and also uh, a Universidad de Aberta uh, from Portugal is an, an open and distance university. In France, uh, we have the participation of the University of Bourgogne. It's face-to-face -face university, but uh, uh, this university has also a, a <clears throat> an online courses too. And in the UK, the participation of the Open University uh, in that case, no? uh, but also we have the collaboration with another uh, participants also in France and, and UK. The idea of the project is to move forward with this idea, this narrow vision of the main indicator for the trajectories, the academic trajectories is finishing the degree of the initial program with uh, success uh, for the students and also this idea to the retention policies uh, in each institution, no? because uh, we, believe that, uh, that we believe that the academic trajectories are really complex. That means usually the students start in one institution that maybe they move to other institution. Um, maybe at the beginning is a face-to-face -face institution that later is an online institution. And our idea is to analyze uh, these situations and to offer uh, support for institutions and also for students. Um, <clears throat> in that case, uh, the goals or the objective of this uh, complex trajectories uh, Erasmus Plus project uh, has two levels. One is institutional. The idea is to provide um, indicators for the quality evaluation of these uh, academic uh, trajectories from the students and also to provide a follow-up of these trajectories. Mm -hmm. And also um, uh, on the level of the student, that means uh, the idea to advise and support the students uh, in order to handle these uh, their complex, complex trajectories. And that means that the main focus, of course, is uh, support uh, for success in complex trajectories in the first students. We have also three levels uh, that we are working in this project. The project started at the end of last year. That means that we, it's a th three years project. That means uh, we are starting at this moment. One is uh, everything related to the quality evaluation. That means um, we would like to analyze uh, and offer as a output of the project uh, indicators, um, quality indicators in order to analyze uh, in, these uh, the policies about the complex uh, trajectories. In that case, for instance, uh, we are working in a not, non, in a notebook in order to uh, prepare a different cases, um, case studies, uh, scenarios from different universities participating in, in the project. The other um, level or, uh, or output or idea that we are working in this project is, of course, to analyze uh, the, the, tra the complex trajectories, uh, trajectories of the students. In that sense, we are working in a particular methodology to identify these uh, complex trajectories, and we are working in a longitudinal um, uh, system to analyze that, and, and we are collecting data from these uh, universities in, in concrete uh, a seven years um, period of time of this data, and we are uh, an, uh, preparing a particular uh, methodology in order to um, offer this methodology uh, to the, after, when we finish the project, to the other universities uh, to implement in their universities in order to analyze this, um, this complex uh, academic trajectories. And also, uh, one of the most important focus for us is to provide support, in, in particular, uh, materials uh, for um, advisor units or support uh, to the student units uh, in, in, in at the universities. In this idea, in, in that case, we are working to prepare uh, different events, uh, multiplier events, etc., and also uh, materials uh, like MOOCs or um, online materials, online courses, uh, focus for um, uh, staff uh, working in uh, advisory student support uh, units in, in higher education institutions, and also for, um, for the students. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, we are starting in this moment, but we are working hard in the area to prepare this, um, this uh, particular methodology of longitudinal analysis methodology. 
uh, and, and also we started working in the area of specifications in order to find these indicators uh, to work in the qualitative analysis of these complex trajectories. And please, if you have any um, interest of this project and would like to con you, you, uh, or would like to know more about the project, you can contact with us, with Alfredo, myself, or other members of this project. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, Joseph. I think uh, it, it was really an interesting approach how to trace uh, the student's route through the learning uh, process, uh, including any kind of uh, higher education studies, not just the uh, digital uh, kind of uh, courses. Um, I might say that we continue with the digital immigrant survey kit, and after that, we will have a, a small debate session about all three projects uh, discussed uh, just a few minutes ago. So please, Ebba, it is your turn to start. Uh, please. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you. So oh, sorry. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ferenc, and uh, thank you so much also for the opportunity to present uh, our two-year project about the Digital Immigrants Survival um, a Toolkit, the DISC project. Um, the partners in this project is uh, myself, uh, representing my company, uh, Quality and Open Online Learning Consultancy at the University of Porto. And together with me here uh, is uh, Alfredo Soeiro. And uh, also his colleague is um, uh, also in, in, um, in this project. And then we have, um, and they are from University of Porto. <coughs> and then we have FQ, FQBL, the European Foundation for Quality and Blended Learning in Austria. We have Training 2000 Italy, the Address uh, Educational Activities Society in Greece. So we are five partners. So the project aim is about the development of course modules to convey specific uh, digital competences. And the target group is about um, the so-called digital immigrants. And that means uh, people with difficulties in transitioning to a more demanding world um, due to lacking uh, digital competences. And um, this group is very, very diverse. So it is not very easy and it is of mainly about the senior um, people as well, but also people with different kinds of, of difficulties in general. But we have to remember that this, the target group is very, very uh, heterogeneous. Uh, and the outcomes of the project, uh, we are aiming to develop um, uh, 15 different kinds of modules, uh, and they are based on the digital comp uh, framework. And also my digital skills, which is rec was recently launched, which is also built on the digital comp framework. So the models are focuses on everyday situations, for example, how to do big banking affairs, how to contact authorities, how to deal with your tax uh, declaration, about digital identity, uh, digital signature, how to deal with um, uh, images and photos and text uh, and uh, sharing uh, those uh, different media as well. Uh, so we are working with um, an innovative approach and we are working with a self-evaluation mandala, which is a self-evaluation tool uh, developed uh, by previous proje EU pro projects. And uh, that means that um, learners can identify their competencies uh, before they have gone through the courses or the modules and map where they are at and where they have their uh, strength and the weaknesses. I will show you how that, um, that looks like. And also uh, after the, they have gone through the models, they can do the self-evaluation again. And the results are that um, all materials will be as open education resources. Uh, that means um, CC BY, SA 4.0. And we will also upload all um, uh, material at um, OER Commons, of course, but also at uh, our webpage and it will also be translated into the partner languages, sorry. So we have those uh, 15 modules and we are also working with a transferability guide. And that means that it can be um, transferred to different kinds of other sectors. So we started with a competence map, uh, which was built on the, uh, as I mentioned, the digital comp uh, 2.0 and my digital skills. 
And then um, it was piloting in, um, uh, by participants in adult education organizations uh, in Greece, Italy, and Austria by a questionnaire. And then after that, we uh, started to develop the, the models. So this is the self-evaluation mandala, uh, one example. <clears throat> it looks like this. And this is um, to the left side, head side. Um, uh, it is the self-evaluation before and then on the right hand side uh, afterwards. And you can see that there are different kind of statement um, uh, and issues. And the learners have to, and the participants have to uh, state if they strongly agree, agree or disagree. So you get that uh, kind of image. And uh, when you get the images, it's more easy to understand where you are at and also to see where you have your strengths and weaknesses. So the training content, um, it is of course uh, created uh, for an individual base for each of the modules. Um, and it is um, uh, with a personal approach and different kind of uh, working styles, working paths. And also um, about, um, it is built on the flipped, flipped learning model and also like a project-based uh, training. And it is a self self path based self path based um, modules. Uh, so with the uh, the conclusions, um, uh, we have already worked with the self evaluation mandala um, for the, for some participants in the piloting, and that has been very very successful so far because you know, the learners and the participants get an image what um, where they are at and what they kind of uh, competences they have themselves. Um, of course, it's not a tool for assessment, um, but it motivates learners to, to strengthen their self of, of their cap capacity. And that is actually what we have uh, seen so far. We are more or less right in the middle of the project. Uh, we have um, done a bit more than half a year, one year, sorry. And we are, have developed all the modules and now we're working uh, with them and they will be in interactive mood mode and uh, in different kind of media as well. Uh, so with that, I would uh, like to uh, conclude and acknowledge um, both the European Commission for the possibilities to work on this, but also for all our partners, which are the logos I mentioned here in this uh, slide. So I tried to make it very brief, and I will also post the, the, web, um, the link for the web page in the, in the chat. And if you have any comments or reflections, um, both me and, and Alfredo, uh, Alfredo is very happy to take uh, your questions. Uh, thank you, Ebba, for this very uh, brief and concise presentation of your projects. No, uh, there were projects uh, in the last uh, three uh, or four, I think, or, or the four. Uh, projects were all about uh, uh, higher education or adult education, I think. Just one question to, uh, to Ebba. Uh, do you know other similar um, initiatives uh, to, to deal with the digital immigrants in the adult age? I think yes, there are um some. Yes, I know. <laughs> um, of course, there are there are several, but um, I know it's, um, explicitly um, some which I'm working on myself, and that uh, is uh, those projects are financed by the Nordic Council of the Ministry. So it is um, <clears throat> it is called the um, Seniors Learning <laughs> Digital Competences. So that is also built for the adults and for especially for the seniors. So we have just had um, a project for one year. And the partners are um, Finland, Sweden, uh, Lithuania, and the Norway. And we have uh, mapped what is going on in those countries. Uh, actually, this, uh, this project was presented also in one of our seminars which we had. And also, um, we have got a, a new project from the Nordic Council, Council of Ministers. And that will be a two-year project. And that is aiming for how to train the trainers, those who are involved to train yeah. them. To train the tra to train the okay. people who have difficulties. Okay, so so there are some, and you have yeah. that connection with them. So yeah. you are you are not uh, working in an isolated uh, no, field. No, we are I'm we sure. are a network and the community. Yeah. Yeah. 
may I ask something there to Joseph? Joseph, um, it is that uh, we also faced the same problem at, at our universities in, in Budapest, uh, that uh, it is very hard to track the trajectory of students through the system, because about half of them who started their, their uh, way in the system uh, as bachelor leave uh, the, the courses without having a valid trade. And we are not uh, alone with this problem in, in, in Europe, I think that uh, what is the general solution to, to make, to, to assess some value of the part-time uh, learning outcomes? Yes, I agree. Yes, <laughs> thanks, Mary. Yes, I agree with you. This is a very um, complicated thing you know, to, but at the end is it's, it's, it's to have um, the opportunity in the institutions to collect correctly the data uh, of these students, where the students came, and also if the students live, uh, where are the students going to, not in, in our institution or, or usually, or, or maybe to a, a labor market. No? And, and also, um, it's important to have uh, the opportunity to collect this data for some particular um, governmental or association of institutions in order to, to have a clear um, a follow up of the trajectory of the students. No? At the end, the, this idea that um, when the students achieve uh, the, the goals, of course, it depends on the, 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 the level of the students. It's, it's correct that uh, in our case, we are analyzing um, uh, grade uh, degrees. That means it's the first uh, years uh, of the students. And, and as I said at the beginning, the particular way to, to measure that is the, if they achieve the final uh, diploma or not. But they can achieve this diploma, for instance, in the other university different than the, when they started. No? That means we need, yes. to, need to analyze yes. it, this and to see what happens. Not maybe at the middle of the period, uh, they started, uh, the students started, uh, for instance, working and uh, part-time studies, etc. And, and we need to, to take this in account uh, from the student's perspective, more than the agencies, uh, quality agencies' perspective or institutional perspective. And it's, it's not so easy to track it down. No, 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 it's not so easy. I yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I have seen one question uh, from Ursula about the pathways uh, in the projects uh, about enhancing educators' competencies. I think it's just... Uh, um, the, a way to the other two projects that were partly about the teachers, the digital competencies and teacher training. So, could the, could uh, Mila and Marika say something about it? Yes, I mean, what what is meant by pathways? Because um, uh, the the main goals or um, objectives of, of the project of the GGTED at you projects are to um, to foster promote teacher educators competencies with regard to digital competencies. So is uh, is that what you mean or? Uh, no, I I was. Uh asking Eba. Ah, okay, sorry. Because in, in this project, I, I feel that we have some um, deficiencies in teachers or from the elder generation and who are no native uh, in terms of digital technologies. And I just wanted to ask Eba if there um, are project pathways for immigrants who are teachers. <laughs> Uh, do you mean immigrants or digital immigrants? Yeah, okay. So so your idea is valid for everyone or your approach is valid for everyone. Yes, that is also why we are in this, uh, this project working on um, the transfer transferability guide. So it can be valid. Mm -hmm. What we have developed, I mean, can be, de can be valid for other kind of groups, other kind of people mm -hmm. with That's other kind great. of needs. Because it is, I mean, the topics and the modules are rather general as I said, about banking, about how to make your tax, de tax declaration, how to pay your payment for your car, for example, in, in this kind of thing. So it's rather general topics. Yeah, yeah. I thought your, your didactics is quite impressive with this mandala because it shows visually where we, where we were before the course and where we are now 
uh, when we have done the course. So that's very, very nice. I will keep that in my mind. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So um, it is, uh, as I said, also it is visible for the for the individuals so they can see. Uh, by the way, while I have the word, we have a conference for this Nordic project on the 29th of June, and it will be in English. So if you are welcome, if you have time, you're welcome to join. Thank you, for both, of, I thank post, you for both of you. Thank you for both of you. I think also Ursula's question was about the special training for teachers that are not competent in digital uh, tools and uh, competencies in general. And uh, it is a it is a gap which still exists. Uh, I took part in a conference in Brussels two years ago uh, dealing with the, the digital education uh, uh, situation in Europe. And one of the main obstacles was that the teachers' digital competencies are not enough. And teachers who graduated 10 or 20 years ago, or, or maybe 30 years ago, are not really used to, to use digital tools in education. So they are unable to integrate it in most cases. Thank you very much. So we have to proceed because time is short. We got 20 minutes to go on three lectures uh, to listen to. Uh, I would like to ask uh, Barbara Schwarzwald, uh, uh, to present the DBCO Digital Credentials for Education Institutions project, yeah. which belongs so, to the higher education project in general. Uh, Matthias, it is your turn. Oh, yeah, no, Alexander, Alexander it's yeah. Alexander. So, yeah. hi, yeah. sorry. So, unfortunately, Barbara is sick. So, um, I'm here to, to replace her and I um, try to do my, my best. My name is Alexander. I'm the Chief Digital Officer at the German Academic Exchange uh, Service. You may call us um, DAD or um, DART. Um, I have a project, or I'd like to pitch a project which is um, rather technology driven. So it's not so much about didactics or, um, or, or policy issues, but we are really focusing on, on IT infrastructure um, development. And um, I'm very happy to share um, um, our ideas here with you and the community because we need you and your networks um, to, um, yeah, for, for us to develop something that is useful. Um, for many, many, many stakeholders. So what is our goal? The goal is to explore the requirements and implementation conditions for a distributed infrastructure standard to establish a digital credentials in higher education um, in a large international scale. So it's really about a um, digital credentials um, framework and, and technology-driven approach contributing to student data portability um, by working on these um, standards. So we are three partners here on the project. The Technical University of Munich um, is one of um, the leading universities um, in Europe with more than 45,000 um, students. They are an early adopter in digital student onboarding. They have a blockchain research cluster and they are um, under the DCC, the Digital Credentials Consortium funding members. The um, Hassel Plattner Institute for Digital Engineering in Potsdam is a center of um, excellence for digital engineering. And since 2012, um, the HPI is very successful in the field of MOOCs and online learning formats. The different platforms of the HPI, such as the Open HPI, the K KI campus, or the AI campus, the e government campus, combine um, to a total of 11 million course enrollments by 4 million registered users. And they are also um, part of the DCC funding members. My own organization, the German Academic Exchange Service, is the world's largest funding organization for academic exchange. And we um, supported since our um, foundation in 1925, nearly 2 million um, young academics in Germany um, and abroad. And that's why we are so interested in the topic of digital credentials and student data portability, working with um, um, digital certificates, because our own scholarships um, are um, part of this, um, yeah, part of this uh, complex issues. And we try to um, create um, digital um, scholarships that um, can be um, yeah, really contribute to more um, academic mobility um, worldwide. So it uh, belongs to our core mission. Um, just a few words about the digital credentials um, 
consortium. Um, they, we are building on um, the white paper that has been uh, published uh, last year. You can find the link here in the presentation and I will share it um, afterwards. Um, we are really um, yeah, convinced by the um, principles um, set by the Digital Credentials Consortium, such as uh, a learner-centered uh, approach. It's standards-based and it's user-driven. And in the middle, you can see some of the founding members, uh, such as the Delft University of Technology, um, the Harvard University, or Tech de Monterey, just to, to name a few um, examples. So setting priorities, um, the leading principles, as I mentioned it before from the DCC white paper set our priorities with we approach the goal of an interoperable infrastructure standard. So we look at, of, we look at the topic from um, an explicitly international perspective. Um, we want to analyze compare and further develop existing approaches in a national, European and international um, context. And we want to describe the requirements and necessary functionalities for such and digital infrastructures. Later on, we develop prototypes and proof of concepts for several use cases coming out of the um, MOOC area from the HPI and our own services from the um, German Academic Exchange Service, as I said before, um, mostly focusing on um, digital scholarships. And finally, uh, we will give recommendations for further operator and support models. So that's our goal. To be a little bit more um, concrete when it comes to the technical uh, terms of the project on the left-hand side, uh, you can see um, our model. Um, we understand a digital credential as a combination of a data uh, object and an envelope containing the data. With the project, we focus mainly on the envelope, less on the data it contains. On the right, you can see a simple overview of the entities involved in the process of handling digital credentials. So just a simple example, a higher education institution wants to, to issue an, a digital certificate to a student. The student should be able to store um, the um, certificate on um, a, a device um, who, he, who wants to prefer. And later on, um, he should be able to share the certificate with a third party, maybe an employee or another um, higher education institution. And therefore, we need a validation ser service to check um, whether um, it is um, um, the right certificate and it truly really comes from um, a higher education institution, which is part of the circle um, of truth. So what are our next um, steps? We will have an, um, a stakeholder dialogue um, in uh, autumn this year. You are all invited to, to come to the session. You'll find the information about that um, at um, the end of the presentation. And um, therefore, you are all invited to join our mailing list so that we can uh, keep in contact uh, with you. And um, yeah, now I'm, I'm happy to uh, take one or two questions and I'm sorry for uh, bothering you with a more technology-driven uh, project. Um, but um, yeah, thank, nevertheless, thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to present our project here. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, do not apolo apologize for being too technical because the techniques behind uh, is the the, uh, the the give the credit that this uh, data are not uh, falsifiable and uh, they cannot be altered and that the that these are the property of the user so the user can select how much information to put in the in, in the envelope and it is uh, sent to an employer or to another higher education institution uh, so I think also the block is it a blockchain based infrastructure at the, no. end, at the end no no it's a we are blockchain agnostic so we are comparing different approaches including blockchain but it's not um, only based on blockchain because there are there were similar approaches also in germany that uh, tried to use the blockchain and they tried to 
push this idea in the European uh, level as well. So there were there were some conferences just dealing uh, what could be the uh, te technology behind uh, storing this uh, data yeah. in a, the most secure uh, way. And there were two or three projects. Uh, I also took part in one in the uh, Open Education Passport project uh, that uh, standardized the data within uh, this and uh, made the, the mock-up of this uh, system to store the data in a blockchain-based uh, format. Uh, I don't know whether it will be continued or not because there are certain doubts about the, the usefulness of blockchain uh, in that context. So thank you very much. It was really interesting for, for us, I think, who already encountered the micro-credentials uh, problem worldwide and also in Europe. Thank you very much. So then we could proceed uh, with the digital dig, dig, dig improving the digital competencies and social inclusion of adults in the creative industries. The project of Diana uh, Andone, Radu Vasiu, and Vlad Mihaescu. I think uh, Diana is here. Diana is here. Yes, yes, I'm here. So it's and, your turn, uh, please. Yes, and I'm ready to, to present the project, and I'll try to be as brief as possible. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Diana Andone, I'm coming from the Polytechnica University of Timisoara in Romania, and I'm going to speak about a project where we develop courses for digital culture. These courses are related to the creative industries, obviously anybody can take them and they are quite general ones with information uh, coming from all the digital competencies, uh, but uh, the examples and the study cases are more related to the creative industries. What are the creative industries? Quite a lot of people focus that this is only museum arts and uh, galleries and libraries, but it's also advertising, mass media, a lot of the media nowadays, as well as the entire IT sector and the gaming sector. The entire project is based on the European DCOM 2.1, released on July 2019, and since then constantly improved. The project idea is to try to identify methods and ways on improving the digital competencies and social inclusion for adults in the creative industries and is uh, made of eight partners coming from seven countries. Uh, uh, obviously, the Polytechnic University of Kinshara from where I'm coming, University Roma Tre from Italy, Alborg University from Denmark, Graz University from Austria, Dublin City University from Ireland, and then uh, also Timisara European Capital of Culture, which withdrew about a year ago and was replaced with the Interact Triad Foundation, also a foundation for culture and galleries in, here in Timisara, and a company from uh, UK, GMEA Associate, and the large association of distance education from Lithuania. Uh, the DigiCulture project obviously had several approaches and we wanted first to see exactly how the digital competencies for creative industries look like and we investigated through different methods to build up the guidelines for digital competencies. Then we integrated a virtual learning hub in uh, dedicated in our platform for MOOCs, Unicampus. And then we designed 13 different courses, also the self-assessment uh, toolkit and the open badges. And we also improved a lot with hope, at least, uh, the communication between technology and creative industry uh, sector. Uh, the courses, you can find them online in a multi-language online platform, which is hosted on Unique Campus. And uh, they are all blended, uh, I mean, all online, free, obviously, to use. And they are self-paced courses, so you can take them anytime you want. And I will strongly encourage you to go and join uh, the courses and take at least one of them. There are uh, basic tra level training courses uh, in these topics, which is a huge variety coming from the internet, World Wide Web, to uh, digital curation, obviously, about safety, privacy, ethics, about social media and then some more advanced ones about augmented virtual reality, mobile apps, and also mobile digital media tools, for example, audio and video. 
We also have courses about management and communication and presentation, and also about content publishing. So they're all quite interesting and quite, um, I think, uh, relatable to a, a lot of uh, uh, audiences, and not only for young adults from the creative industry, which is our main target group. They are basic level training, but I need to say, for example, that we piloted this also with uh, students in uh, technical or in uh, humanities universities around uh, the partnership. And uh, the feedback was very positive. Quite a lot of them said that uh, it's, uh, it's the, the, they found knowledge which they had no idea about them and that they liked the most that it's very comprehensive and shortly presented and in an easy language. So you can even, even easy consolidate uh, some information. So almost everybody can find something useful in the courses as they are based on best practices example in several open education resources uh, produced uh, around, uh, around Europe and the world and also a lot of culture and technology examples. We are constantly and continuously looking for the study cases coming from digital artists uh, uh, or anybody involved in the digital creative industry. So if you have some examples, please post them in the chat uh, session or send them to me. The course development was a very iterative one. We followed the design sprint method on the course development or the agile method um, more improved as we are all quite a lot of technological uh, universities. And uh, we had several iteration of the courses uh, as trying to improve them. And uh, we consider them in constant beta mode as we add uh, study cases and we also collect from the feedback and examples which are given by the learners uh, in the courses and include them as external materials in the courses. Uh, the web interface of the courses also has some information, so you can go there and uh, um, have some information about the courses, and then you need to register to the platform free uh, to use, obviously, and then you can join the courses, which are in English and then in also six languages. In each course, you will have a, a sort of introduction about the learning objective, competencies, outcomes, activities, and the time to complete the course. You will be able to see also the overall progress of the course and also the, the badge which you can gain at the end. And all the courses are in a tile format presented uh, as the platform is also a Moodle platform with a lot of enhancement developed by uh, the UPT team. This is how another course looks like, also the completion progress, and uh, this is a tutor way, and you can have an overview of the students, and you can have all the information, and you can access it and, and, and get um, also you know, videos and 360s views and so on. Once you complete all the activity on your own time, uh, some of the courses in different periods have been facilitated and we intend also in July to run another facilitated uh, courses uh, period. You gain the open badge, which is uh, endorsed by all the universities, has a digital signature, is also stored in our Moodle platform in the Unicampus, but also exported in Badger. So you have multiple ways of exporting and using this badge and also the certificate because uh, not only the badge is issued, but also a nice certificate signed by the partners. These are the 13 badges which are issued uh, for each of the courses. It doesn't matter in which language we, you will follow the courses, you will get the same badge which you can share and badge and certificate which you can share and publicly put anywhere. There are several course demos on the on YouTube and also on the website. And uh, this is, for example, how the, the website looks like. And you can register on the courses and follow us on Facebook or on Twitter uh, or on YouTube for a lot of more information as we will also have a large conference in uh, end of July hosted in uh, Timishara where we are trying to present even more examples from digital culture uh, and the, the blending of culture and technology. So this is the project website and thank you very much. I don't know if I was in time, but hopefully. Thank you. Thank you very much, Diana. It was ever interesting as always. <laughs> no problem. <coughs> if only we had eight 
uh, presentation, not nine, we would just in time. Unfortunately, we are nine, so I have to give the floor first to Vlad and then to make a kind of a final round of questions, if yeah. you forgive me. So please, Vlad. Uh, no, it's, you... it's it's still me, a parent it's still apologies. You. For me. Yes. Okay, yes. okay, okay. Then because Fiona. Vladi Vlad is uh, in the session, we are in the finals with the students now, and we needed to choose who is doing this and who is the going okay. with the students. Well, okay. oh. two Zoom sessions don't work on the same computer, unfortunately. <laughs> so I will present also about the mod IT if you allow me. Thank you so much for this. So this is another project in which uh, my team is involved as a partner, is the Mode IT uh, project, uh, which is an Erasmus Plus also K2 project about curriculum organization by implementing MOOCs model at the level of universities of higher education, and is mainly trying to focus on how you can improve the curricula on a MOOC-based uh, curriculum design, which is more innovative, more instructional uh, approach, and more interactive. The project partners are, uh, and the leader is Fachhochschule de Mittelstand from Germany, and the project partners are Kaunas University of Technology, Anadol University, University Polytechnic of Porto, and us as Polytechnic University of Timisoara. What is the mode IT approach? Obviously, is a common goal about uh, open educational uh, services to a wider um, audiences, and we focus a tiny bit more on the engineering of or the science and technology aspects of the higher education because this is where we have the, the expertise and where a lot of the, how to say, innovation and pedagogical innovation have not penetrated so, so often and so easily because this is a more traditional uh, field uh, usually of teaching. We need to, uh, we want what we want and what we plan is to boost the higher education uh, institutes, professors' um, awareness about the MOOCs, the MOOC design mainly and the delivery to develop an innovative MOOC-based instructional approach for curriculum design. And this will mean also a self-assessment tool and also a curricula, a, a, a training program. And then we want uh, to improve the students' learning experience as uh, quite a lot of professors or more than 60 professors from the universities will improve their courses uh, and will develop new courses based on the uh, approach which was, uh, um, how to say, um, taught or delivered through the Mod IT training program. The Mod IT uh, result is obviously the first one, which is already done and was already piloted. And you can also... Uh, take it by yourself, the self-assessment tool for higher education professors, of the online training program, which I mentioned, and then the re redesigned MOOC-based uh, curricula by integrating MOOCs into the traditionally higher education uh, projects and program. The first tool which we developed, the online self-assessment tool, you can find the, the link here is embedded in the LMS uh, model of the project, which is hosted by the uh, Kaunas University of Technology. And it's available in English, German, Lithuanian, Portuguese, Romanian, and Turkish. So you don't need to take it only in one language and has 27 competencies from pedagogy and technology, quite a lot of uh, questions and evaluation. The good thing is that it provides immediate suggestion for competence improvement and where you can find information and what you can do. This is, for example, uh, how it will look depending on different grades of uh, the patterns uh, of the answers which you will uh, give and you will select for each of the, I think there are 36 questions. Uh, you will be given uh, some recommendation where you are uh, lacking or you need more support uh, for developing that competence. Uh, um, during the evaluation, we had some very nice feedback from the professors coming from 11 universities which have uh, piloted the tool as they consider that it's a good idea to use the Bloom uh, taxonomy that they like very much, that they get immediate uh, feedback from that and they, they, uh, that it was provoking them to think about the unthinkable. Uh, as you see, quite a positive uh, uh, approach and evaluation about uh, the tool and how they, they, they want it and if they want to recommend also that uh, to others. 
The other project, the other project result, which is now running, starting from 24th of May, is the open online training program where we are now in the middle. So we've been doing the kickoff, we've done the online self-assessment, and now we are running the open online training program, and then we will redesign the new curricular base. Anybody can join that project, that uh, training program at this address, open.ktu.edu. And there are, is, uh, um, it's formed by five modules coming from Foundation of Online Learning, MOOC course design, MOOC content production, where we speak about digital learning resources, ORs, and uh, different tools about how to build up uh, uh, animation videos, uh, um, audios, anima um, virtual reality even tools, and so on. And also how to involve students in uh, co course, uh, co as co-designers of your course. And then MOOC delivery about online platform and where you can publish them. And MOOC also informal learning some example of how it was used. All of the courses are based on interactive videos, on open educational resources, different lessons, quizzes, reflection activity, discussions and peer learning activity. And obviously at the end, a, a project which is uh, on PBL, developing a course module with an interactive multimedia artifact. This is, for example, how uh, uh, one of the courses look like and where you can also interact with the audiences. So please join us on the, sorry, on the modit.eu and uh, where you can find more information and also you are able to join the open online training program. Uh, thank you very much, Diana. It was really nice to hear that uh, someone just takes care of how to integrate MOOCs into the education. I remember the Budapest uh, Eden conference, there was a Oxford style debate. Do you remember that? Yes, and yes, the, yes. The, the, the two uh, opinions were OER or MOOCs. And my yes. pos position at that time was that we are comparing apple to bananas. So they serve different so, um, <coughs> Uh, different goals, so you cannot compare and you cannot uh, just use this one instead of the other because the MOOC is a methodology, methodology, not just it is open. It is just one feature that it is open, but otherwise it is a methodology and the OER is not a unified methodology in itself. It can take different forms. So exactly. this, this uh, project just uh, strengthens my opinion that if we would like to go in a way to, uh, to uh, integrate more digital parts into the normal curriculum, because it's a, essentially the big uh, universities still use a face-to-face -face education, may, maybe hi hybrid, but not uh, exclusively digital, then we have to go follow this way. Uh, so it's, it's very interesting, uh, I think, uh, also for us uh, and in, uh, for Europe. No, uh, at that point, I just wanted to share my screen uh, with you about about the whole uh, synergy session. So what we we are listening to here uh, mostly uh, refer to teacher training, higher education, digital competency and skills, uh, and partly to the K twelve sector, the self assessment, school development, language teaching, e maturity, MOOCs, openness training approach and student learning trajectory, uh, virtualization and digital credentials. But the big picture is that these uh, ideas are, are all around. So there are many, many projects refer to the uh, digitalization of higher education in general, very many to teachers training and very many to digital skills and competencies. And uh, also, the self-assessment is mostly included in more, most projects. So I would like to ask you for a last round of questions, if you are interested, asking the presenters about their initiative. Please do that, or you can do it in, in the chat box as well. If not, then thank you for your contributions in general, and uh, have a nice lunch time. <laughs> and, come back to, to the, the remaining part of the conference, the closing sessions. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.